Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. I will instruct you, I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he will not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him. And then here's God's promise. He says he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season. God's promise to prosper us. He's also promised to guide us, to give us wisdom, to give us the understanding that we need to succeed. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, it's always a joy to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word and also to spend some time in prayer with you. Uh, we appreciate those of you who respond to these telecasts that come your way. Uh, we, are, we are always happy to hear from you. So if you could take a moment, uh, just drop us an email uh, to the address that's on your screen. Uh, let us know how these telecasts are enriching your life. We also encourage you to uh, make use of the free resources on our church website. Uh, you can go to our church website, abcw.org, and uh, listen to our Sunday sermons. You can listen to previous uh, telecasts on, uh, of, of Living Strong. You can also make use of all our free publications that are available in several different languages. Now, we encourage you to do that and spread the word. Tell others about it. Download our church app where you can listen to a five-minute devotional every day on your church app, as well as a lot of other resources that are available on the church app. And of course, make sure you visit our church music website, uh, apcmusic.org. Listen to the songs that have been written by our worship team and, and just be blessed, be inspired and be encouraged in your life. As we continue talking about receiving God's guidance on the program today, I want to just cover a few more aspects or a few more ways in which God speaks to us. And then we'll talk about how do we put it all together. So far, we've considered seven different ways uh, through which God can communicate to us, as, uh, bring His guidance into our lives. We've talked about the Word of God. We talked about the indwelling work of the Spirit or the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We talked about uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we then talked about dreams. We talked about prophetic words. Uh, we talked about godly counsel. We even talked about angel messengers that God could use to speak into our lives. Now. Uh, several, some of these things may seem very spectacular in nature, and now we talk about some of the things that may seem more uh, ordinary, more simple, and yet nonetheless they are also very important. The eighth uh, uh, area in which God, God's guidance comes into our lives is simply the renewed mind. The renewed mind is basically us, our thinking, our logic, our reasoning that God has given to us, uh, but it has been renewed to the ways and, and the thoughts and the ways of God. So we must first of all understand that our mind is something God designed and God created. Our ability to think, reason, analyze, imagine, envision uh, 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 is, is, has been given to us by God. So it's not an evil thing. The mind in itself is not an evil thing. But the mind needs to be renewed. What does that mean? What does it mean to renew the mind? It simply means that because we are so accustomed uh, to living according to the ways of this world, according to the thoughts and the patterns of this world, uh, we need to unlearn that, so to speak, and embrace or learn the ways and the thoughts of God. Uh, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. 
So in, 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 in relation to God directing our paths and receiving God's guidance in our lives, one of the things the Bible instructs us to do is to, is to trust in Him and not depend on our own understanding. Now, this does not mean do not use your own understanding. It, it, it means that we, instead of depending on our own ability and our own logic and our own reasoning, we now begin to embrace the ways and the thoughts of God. And so we let God move through our understanding. You know, sometimes people read this verse and they say, therefore, I will not use my understanding. I will not think about it at all. I will not look, uh, look at matters objectively. Now, that's not the way God wants us to live. He wants, to use, he wants us to use our mind, but use it in a way that honors Him. Use our renewed mind. The Bible also tells us in Proverbs 4 and verse 26, Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. So God is saying, think about the path that you're taking. Ponder the path of your feet. Think about it. You use your mind to consider the ways in which you're going and let all your ways be established. So uh, the renewed mind is a mind that is able to embrace the thoughts and the ways of God. In Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, uh, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So there's a huge gap between the ways and the thoughts of this world, which we are so used to, and the ways and the thoughts of God. There's a big gap. And God is saying, is inviting us to embrace His ways and His thoughts. And He's given us His word to do that. That's why he says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth in connection with this whole passage in Isaiah 55. So as we assimilate the word of God, we read the word of God, we let our mind be renewed by the word of God, we then have what we call as a renewed mind, a mind that is able to think according to the ways and the thoughts of God and a mind that is not just going according to the ways and thoughts of the world. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 12 Paul writes there in verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So one of the things we can do with a renewed mind is that we can prove. That means we ourselves can analyze, we can think, we can reason with our renewed mind, and we can prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect in the eyes of God. The renewed mind is able to do this. The renewed mind, because it is now thinking in the, according to the ways and thoughts of God, is able to determine what is good, acceptable, and pleasing to God. So here's another way by which we receive God's guidance. is by renewing our mind, and with the renewed mind, we prove, we test, we analyze, we, um, we process all the information we have, and we say this is good, acceptable, and pleasing to God. This is the will of God. So, learn to renew your mind with the Word of God and use your renewed mind to process information and arrive at what is good, acceptable, and pleasing to God. Two more things that we want to consider. The ninth a way in which we can receive God's guidance is by recognizing times and seasons. You see, we know the Bible tells us that to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. And we know the way God works in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. It says that God makes everything beautiful in His time or in its season. So God also uh, works and he, he, he moves things in our lives according to times and seasons. Psalm 31 and verse 15, the psalmist says, My times are in your hands. So the times and seasons of your life are in the hands of God. And as you recognize the times and seasons, you move with the seasons. So you recognize so this season is changing, therefore God is leading me into the next season, and therefore I also must change. I must move with God in the season of life that He has appointed for me. And the change of seasons that He's introducing into my life, I also need to change. So if you are alert uh, to the times and seasons of your life that God has appointed for your life, uh, and the way God is moving those times and seasons in your life, you also will, you will be able to recognize his guidance. This is what I need to do in this season. Oh, and the next season is what God is preparing me for. And I know that the next season will require such and such things of me. So you get ready for that next season. So that when God changes the season of your life, 
you transition, transition smoothly into the season he brings upon you. So God works in our lives in accordance to times and seasons. The Bible tells us that in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment, for because for every matter there is a time and judgment. So a wise man's heart is being attentive to the seasons, the times, and the judgment means the right thing to do because for every matter there is a time, there is a season, and there is a judgment, there is a right thing to do. Pay attention to times and seasons as God changes it. Uh, that's an indicative to you that uh, you need to begin to change or you begin to move into something new. You begin to move with God as He changes times and seasons in your life. The tenth and the last way that we will consider in which God brings guidance into our lives is through what we would refer to as circumstances and divine setups. That means God is orchestrating situations. He is orchestrating circumstances in our lives. Things don't happen by accident in our lives. God is setting things up. And so you recognize what God is doing, the handiwork of God in your life situations, in your circumstances, and then you respond to that. You respond correctly. As we saw earlier in Proverbs 3 and verse 6, as we acknowledge Him in all our ways, He directs our steps. So one of the ways in which God directs our steps is through orchestrating the circumstances, orchestrating situations. Maybe God sets up a door of opportunity for you and you walk right there and say, wow, there's an opportunity for me. Is this God? And if it is God, you move into it. God sets up divine contacts. People come into your life. You never imagined that you would contact such people, but God has brought them into your life. He set it up for you in order to lead you and guide you in a certain direction. The Lord Jesus says, These things says he who is holy and true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. So he's talking about how he can open a door for your life, nobody can shut it. Or he will close things and nobody can open it. So we need to be uh, sensitive to these operations, these workings of God in our life situations. As God opens doors and God closes doors, as he creates a way, As he says, okay, don't go down that path. Uh, You'll be attentive to God's handiwork in the circumstances of your life. But keep in mind that not every closed door is a no from God. Sometimes you face a closed door and God wants you to push through it. He wants you to believe him to open up that door. So don't take every closed door as a no. Uh, That is one uh, closed door could be an indicator saying that God says, don't go that way. Or it could be an obstacle from the enemy saying, I'm going to try to prevent you from going down this path because there's a great opportunity that's awaiting for you, awaiting for you down that path. So the enemy also could put obstacles. So you need to discern what is from God, what is not from God. If the enemy is trying to hinder you, you push past that because God is with you. Believe God to open up doors for your life. So we've talked about several different ways in which God releases his guidance to us. Now, the important thing is for us to be able to put all this together. So when you're about to make a decision, you're praying, God, show me your guidance. Show me what uh, your will. Uh, Show me the way in which you want to guide me. God may speak to you through uh, two or three of these ways. It's not that all the ways that we've talked about will, you know, start giving you the same message. But God may speak to you two, two or two or three ways. Maybe it's a word that is quickened to you. Uh, It's an inner witness that you're having in your spirit. And then at the same time, in your circumstances, things are falling in place. So you need to put this together. That means, yes, God has been speaking to to me through his word. I'm feeling the peace of God in my heart. And the door has swung open. So therefore, here is God directing my path down this road. So you put it all together and you're able to understand what God is saying. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17 says this. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So he's telling us walk circumspectly. That means walk watchfully, walk carefully, walk intelligently. And he says, uh, redeem your time, watch over the way you, your 
what happens with your time. And he says, don't be un unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That means you are putting it all together. You are uh, putting these pieces together. God is bearing witness uh, through one to two to three or four different ways. And you are understanding what the will of God is for your life. So we've just highlighted several different ways in which God speaks to us. But now you need to understand the will of the Lord. You need to be able to put all this together and determine this is the right course of action. This is what God is leading me into. Now, one very important guideline here is this, that you need to have at least two or three witnesses. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 1, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That means a word from God. Uh, every matter, you need to have two or three witnesses. So you said, God is speaking to me through his word. I received a prophetic word. I've also had a dream. Now you've got three witnesses. Maybe a fourth one. The door is opening. Yeah. So now all these things are coming together. And that's a clear confirmation to you that that is the direction God wants you to go. So uh, 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 develop the ability to understand what the will of the Lord is. As God is speaking to you through one or more of these channels, you be attentive to him and you put it all together. A few more thoughts here about receiving and following God's guidance. It is important for us to stay with the last instruction that God gave you. There are times when God doesn't need to speak anything big and different in your life. He just wants you to stay with the last instruction he gave you. Uh, he's spoken to you. He's put you in a place. Uh, he's given you a, a, a task to fulfill. Stay with that until you, the next big word from God comes. You know, uh, big decisions require big directions, meaning the more important a decision is that you're about to make, the more significant the, the, the guidance, the direction uh, that you must receive from God. And that's very important. And uh, at the same time, uh, remember to stay with the last instruction God gave you. If he's not speaking anything new, it simply means keep doing what you're doing. Do it well. Keep growing in it. Keep expanding it because that is God's last word. Stay on course with God. So avoid being self-driven. Many of us professionals today, we are very self-motivated. And in our uh, self-motivation, we can go off doing things that God never really intended for us to do. We can go off in directions that God never really assigned for our lives. And so we need the ability to have self-control. So be uh, committed to following God's direction and doing the things that God wants you to do. Avoid doing things God does not want you to do. Uh, distractions uh, result in dissipation. They result in waste of time, energy, and resources. So avoid uh, distractions. Uh, avoid being self-driven. Avoid distractions. Avoid dwelling in the past. You know, it's great to remember the past and the good things God has done, but always live in the present with an eye on the future. You know, uh, if you're dwelling in the past, you know, you can never drive a car just looking in the rearview mirror. You're bound to hit somebody. So if you want to keep progressing, you've got to look into the future. Now and then you take a glimpse on the past, you're grateful for what has happened in the past. But if you want to keep moving forward, you've got to keep looking forward. And so stay that way. Keep looking forward as you uh, journey with God into what he has in store for you. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in the Word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2019 for the one-year Certificate in Theology and Christian Ministry, two-year Diploma in Theology and Christian Ministry, three-year Bachelor's Degree in Theology and Christian Ministry, short-term Bible courses for three months in Varanasi, UP, from September to December in English and Hindi. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College or call us at 99854-548-99. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA. We trust that this series on receiving God's guidance has 
uh, been of some help to you, has opened up your understanding on the different ways that God speaks and how uh, you are able, uh, how we bring it all together in order to arrive at God's guidance for our lives. We'd love to hear from you if you have got questions, if you've got comments that you'd like to respond to on this series, write to us. Tell us what's happening in your life. I will be delighted to hear from you. We're going to pray together uh, before we close the program. I want to pray especially for God's blessing, uh, uh, for you to be able to receive uh, guidance and direction in your life in areas that you've been praying about. I want to pray that blessing for you before we close. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the many ways in which you speak to us and your desire to guide us. I pray for each one listening, Father. You said, I will lead you, I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Lord, your word says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And even if he fall, he will not be utterly forsaken, but for the Lord upholds him. So God, I pray that blessing of having our steps ordered by God over everyone listening, God. I pray that they will receive your guidance in their lives, in the decisions they are, they're about to make. They will know that they've heard from you and they're going down the path that you want them to take. Let their steps truly be ordered by the Lord. I pray this for them in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Something about the Psalms I really love. You know, I love the honesty of it, the rawness. You know, it's something childlike. Uh, we say he's brutally honest. They are prayers. They are prophetic prayers. It's not just poetry, but it's poetry on fire. You know, so when you put a melody to something like, the Lord is my rock, my strength, my shield, my strong tower, you know that heaven is agreeing with you. The Psalms were intended for corporate use. And when you sing straight from the Word, you're not only singing to Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because He is the Word and He is perfect theology. Oh God, you are my God. Nothing compares to your steadfast love. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications, The Father's Love, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and Gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are available for free. These resources are ideal for personal study, for use in small groups, churches, and ministries. You can download them at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org.